Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is Tyrone back with Tech Life. And AT&T recently reported their first quarter earnings. And now they're going back to somewhat of the same old AT&T where it's very quiet, not a lot of uh, public noise. And for the next 90 days or so, they go back into hibernation. Now, that I'm not saying that, you know, they're, they're not working. Of course, they're they're upgrading, they're, they're expanding the fiber. But as a business, they're, they're not very outspoken much. And you don't hear from them too often. Like, right, T-Mobile, they, they push out articles. They let you know their moves. They throw out, you know, at least two to three big articles uh, per month. That, that's like something big. And then we, we, we get little updates throughout the week usually, right? We don't get that from AT&T which makes them very uninteresting. Now, I'm sure we'll get some news from AT&T, but they're not as outspoken, right? Verizon, they're starting to be more vocal. You have inside Verizon, you have up to speed, you have the this May 15th announcement, for an example. So we do get some stuff, uh, some announcements, and then you got, you know, Verizon news. So we get some stuff, but AT&T, not much going there. So is that cause for concern? Perhaps, right? Recently, we found out that at during the quarterly earnings that cash flow wasn't where free cash flow was about a billion dollars less than what the market has anticipated. So that immediately put fear into investors and shareholders that potentially in the future that they might have to cut dividend because they can't pay dividend and pay down the debt because the free cash flow is lowering now. You know, granted, they're still guiding a almost $16 billion free cash flow by the end of the year. So I, I think that concern is a bit overblown. But I think at t needs to keep us in the loop more, right? Right now, from what I'm being to, uh, told internally, a lot of restructuring going on at at t And that's happening across all corporations, not just wireless. That's happening uh, across all businesses due to the times of the economy. But... There's going to be a lot of layoffs happening at at t So they're trying to they're trying to lean the company out even more. And I'm told there's going to be several rounds. And these these next ones, these next uh, layoffs are going to be quite massive. That's what I'm hearing. That's what's that's what's ongoing. If you look at the total, the total employee count, it's going to get. It's going to keep getting lower for at t now. It's it's going to be. It's going to be hard for at t to to really do do that because internally they probably don't fully know what to focus on. They kind of have to they they have to find a, a, a perfect balance, right? Is is it going to be wireless? Is it going to be fiber? What's generating the the revenue, the profits at this point in time? What's 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 excite? What what are we excited for? Right? So for me. From my point of view, being mostly focused on wireless, I, if I look at at and I'm most excited about FirstNet because of the coverage expansion and then the fixed wireless access product that they're launching to market, right? If you're an investor, you probably look at only two things. You probably look at fiber and maybe you start peeking into fixed wireless access because that's going to be newfound revenue, Right. Now, if they're if if you're just overlaying the current existing DSL footprint with fixed wireless access, are you really making more money or is that customer just going to continue paying you the same amount on a different product? Right. So you could look at it from that perspective. But then uh, AT&T could step in and say, well, we're no longer having uh, having to service the DSL. So that's going to save us uh, operations cost, whatever the case may be. Right. Because now you're just operating off the wireless network. So you can find positives there. So, like I said, if you're an investor shareholder, you're probably keeping an eye on fiber and this fixed wireless access situation and and looking into how how widely they're going to scale this. I don't think they're going to go big scale. I just don't see that happening. Um, it just would put too much strain on, on the sectors. For an example, my apartment complex is all DSL, never got upgraded to fiber. If the entire 125 units get put on fixed wireless access, that that sector that's pointed towards my apartment complex is going to break. 
<laughs> it's going to crash. It's just too much usage. So they probably do have a certain amount of openings for people that want to switch. And then when that's filled up, then they stop offering it. I think that's how they're going to approach that. But again, those are some things that I get excited for. I get excited for FirstNet, right? The expansion, the coverage, rule coverage. And then, you know, you 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 can look at fiber and be excited about that because that brings in revenue. Um, it has a high ARPU and that could, f you know, further fund your CapEx in the future. But you still have to think that 70% of the business is still all coming. Revenue is coming from wireless. So in my opinion, if you're... If you're AT&T, it should be a no-brainer. You should be all priority on, on, on wireless. But then again, the next wave of your future growth, it seems to be coming from fiber. If you get the fiber into the living room, you get the wireless business. That seems to be the knockout punch for AT&T. Fiber, then wireless. Now, I, I know I stated in the previous video, the fiber footprint is not as large as the wireless network. And while that's true, they seem to still be trying to expand fiber where they can. And again, once they get into the living room, they win that entire account. They usually get them on wireless as well. So it looks like AT&T has to figure it out. It, you know, their go to market strategy is great, but they're they're just very uninteresting and and and. They, they kind of get forgotten about, right? We just we just talked about them during the quarterly earnings, and now we haven't heard anything since, right? While Verizon and, and T-Mobile, they're constantly in the news cycle. Verizon, we have the best network in LA. T-Mobile, we're doing this. We're doing this with the VA, right? Verizon comes, boom, we have this contract, $448 million with the VA, right? Nothing from AT&T. It's, 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 it's very quiet, so let me know what you think about that in the comment section down below. Look forward to reading your comments. Make sure you guys like, share, subscribe to the channel. Follow my social media outlets for more updates. This is Tyrone with Tech Life. See y'all in the next one. Peace.